Welcome to News Alert on Capital Television. More than 30,000 candidates who were successful in the 2014 West African Senior School Certificate Examination may not be able to assess university education in the 2014-2015 academic year. This is because two major public universities, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and the University of Cape Coast, had closed admissions for the 2014-2015 academic year long before results were released. The KNUST and UCC closed the submission of applications by qualified candidates for admissions on April 11th and April 30th, 2014, respectively. Confirming the position of the two public universities, the Deputy Minister of Education in charge of tertiary education, Mr. Samuel Okujitu Ablakwa, said they explained that, per their programs, it was too late for them to entertain new applications at the time the results were released. The University of Ghana, Legon, the University for Development Studies, the University of Mines and Technology and the University of Education Winneba are, however, offering admissions to qualified applicants. Earlier this year, the four universities announced that the 2014 WASI candidates who were awaiting their results will be permitted to apply for admission. The Ministry of Education had earlier this year given an assurance that the candidates would not be denied admission to the public universities of their choice. Breakdown of printing equipment at the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority has left some drivers frustrated over the authority's failure to issue them with license cards. For some months now, persons who visit the DVLA's offices in Accra and Tema to get some new cards or renew expired ones have been left disappointed. They are only issued temporary license printed on sheets of paper. For security reasons, the printing of cards is centralized at the DVLA's head office, but the Tema and Accra offices have not received new cards since February and May respectively. Officials at the Tema office say they have submitted the data for more than 10,000 persons who have come to get their ID cards, but the breakdown of six of the machines has stalled operations. Meanwhile, the paper issued to a driver cleared to receive a fresh license or have his old license renewed has a lifespan of three months after which the license in the form of an identity card is issued. But drivers say they want the permanent licenses instead of the temporary ones because of police harassments. Campaigning against the genital mutilation of females can prove to be a costly affair, as experienced by Ibrahim Umuhira Kurima, an indigenous of Dorumu in the Upper West region. According to Madame Kuruma, things got so bad that some chiefs and elders of the community even threatened her with murder for campaigning against female genital mutilation. I decided to fight it, but that time I was too young to fight. So last two years I said I'll fight it. The chiefs and elders, they threatened my life and all that. Where is their culture and something, something like that. So I decided to get a platform to talk about it because um, so many people are suffering because of this. I'm suffering too because I can't keep a relation to myself. I've not given benefit, but my relatives lost their children as a result of this when they had to give birth. Others even died as a result. One girl, she's 17, she's now getting to 18 years. She's an HIV positive because of this practice. Madame Kurima, who became a victim of FGM when she was a week old, says although she became a victim at an early age, it was when she attained the age of 15 that she became aware of the damage to her genital thanks to her mates in senior high school. It was a week old when they mutilated me. So I became 15 years old. I never knew I was a victim. I realized I was a victim when I got to SS due to ladies bathing together and all that. I realized my womanhood was different from that one that was inside there with us. So I didn't understand why God should create us different. I asked, she said, 
a thing hanging there were secretaries. So I forwarded it to my master, one of my teachers at the school. He told me the disadvantages of it. He said there's nothing like advantage of practicing FGM. She added that the practice has adversely affected her relations with men. I was there for two years when another decided to give another guy a chance. It was the same thing. I said maybe enough, they are stronger or something. I dated South Nasty too, making them four, making four guys. But still, it's the same story. So I decided not to go out with any guy again. So I fight it, help others. Do you know some people, they've cut them, but they don't know they are victims? People, they think it's normal having sex, having pains, and giving birth, losing your child, or dying as a result. It's normal. Although Ghana has made strides in curbing the rate of female genital mutilation, stakeholders say a lot more could be done to protect the women folk. A 12-day flower exhibition fair has taken off in Accra. Stratcom Africa, the show organizers say, the Ghana Garden and Flower Fair is to boost the horticulture business in the country. A flower symbolizes many things, often used to show affection and celebrate happy occasions, such as marriages and birthdays, as well as used in funeral services. Flowers, however, are increasingly being used to cultivate lifelong business partnerships, generating huge income for growers, value others and distributors. Organizers say they hope to use the fair to enlighten participants and allow for networking opportunities. Capital TV spoke to a rep of Stratcom Ghana who explained the rationale for the fair. We started this last year and this is our second show. It's going to be an annual thing we do. There are exhibitions, there are workshops for kids and adults and then there are also fun activities such as picnics, fashion shows on the weekends. We, re we realize that some African countries such as Kenya, such as Cote d'Ivoire are exporting in excess of $300 million annually. So we decided that Ghana, God has given us the sunshine, God has given us the soil, water, but we focus too much attention on our minerals such as the gold and diamond and so on. But we think that we can also take advantage of the horticultural industry as uh, to create jobs to help people identify alternative sources of income. Other business representatives say they hope to seize new opportunities by partaking in the fair. The Ghana Garden and Flower Fair ends on 8 September 2014. We are here to sell the initiative to people who want to go into flower uh, production so that in case you have any flower of interest, you can bring to us so that uh, we multiply the kind of flower in large numbers for you to start your, your flower sales. So far we've had orders from hotels who want us to decorate their, you know, the for, forefront of their um, hotels. So it means that we are making an impact. We feel that these types of events are fantastic in bringing all sorts of producers and suppliers who provide garden materials uh, in Ghana on, in one place. So we don't have to be running here and there to look for things. I have been blown away by the creativity, the depth, the beauty of some of the wonderful plants and pots and garden accessories that are here. Some foreign nationals from Guinea and Sierra Leone who attempted to enter Ghana through the Paga border were turned away for failing to produce certificates indicating prior screening for the Ebola disease. The head of Paga Port Health Unit, Francis Nyameche, speaking to the media said the travelers were denied entry because of a directive from the Economic Community of West African States. He added that it was also a measure aimed at preventing infected persons from sneaking into the country since the border posed the 
did not have the screening equipment to verify the travelers were free from the Ebola virus. According to Mr. Nyamiche, when the ECOWAS heads of state met in Accra, they made it known that other African nationals arriving in the country must show their certificate indicating that they have been screened and cleared of Ebola. He said because of the lack of screening machines, the only alternative was to allow those with certificates to enter the country and refuse those without the clearance document entry. Government has meanwhile pledged to provide border agents with Ebola screening machines in the shortest possible time. As of August 26, 2014, the World Health Organization reported that a total of 3,069 suspected cases and 1,552 deaths have so far been recorded. Marriage is the union of two consenting adults, usually between a man and a woman. After going through the requisite rituals, society recognizes man and woman as husband and wife. Generally, when a man is ready to propose to his love, he nails and offers the famed words, Would you marry me? while presenting a ring. The Ghanaian man has been tagged as being less romantic compared to other nationals, so we randomly asked men how they proposed to their ladies. While the ladies shared with the news team, what urged them to accept the love of their suitors? Kneel down, now close my eyes, and I'll say I love you. Ghanaian men, they want to just say it just like that, without gift, but some will go to the extent of getting a gift or maybe a flower, to propose. For me, I would like to go to a restaurant and serve the ring to the lady. Yeah, that's how I would love to propose to my lady in future. I'll just, I'll just take the girl to the beach and, you know, look, look straight into her eyes and just tell her I love her and I would, I would like to marry her. Western leaders have criticized Russia for its destabilizing influence on the crisis in Ukraine at the start of a NATO summit in Wales. NATO and the UK warned that pressure on Russia would be increased if it did not change course in eastern Ukraine. Prior to the summit, Ukraine's president briefed U.S. and EU leaders on earlier discussions on a ceasefire plan with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Some 2,600 people have died in fighting between Ukrainian troops and rebels. The West says it has evidence that Mr. Putin is supporting the separatists with training and arms and has sent Russian troops across the border, accusations Russia denies. The conflict has forced more than a million people from their homes in eastern Ukraine, according to United Nations estimates. During the two days of talks, NATO leaders are also set to discuss the rise of Islamic State in Afghanistan, where Taliban militants launched a deadly attack on a government compound on Thursday. Day. European leaders are also set to discuss a new round of tougher economic measures against Russia. It's a little secret that women love to look good and have nice fragrance, but certain beauty choices ruins their body and ultimately leaves terrible scars. From ancient times to date, cosmetic products continue to be used either for beauty purposes or with religious undertones. Applying makeup has a significant impact on how women are perceived since first impressions count. A well-applied makeup can endear a lady to friends, relations and lover, making the wearer look attractive, confident and likable. New studies, however, suggest that women who use makeup on a daily basis are flooding their bodies with as much as 5 ounces of chemicals a year. A study has shown that some women use more than 20 different beauty products a day, while 9 out of 10 apply makeup which is out of date. A cocktail of cosmetics can enhance beauty, but dangerous chemicals are also absorbed into the body through the skin. Some health aspects have gone as far as linking some of the compounds used to make cosmetics and toiletries with side effects such as skin problems, premature aging, and even cancer. Eye specialists have also related makeup with eye infections and other conditions. Mrs. Abna Yanti, a beautician, speaks on some of the harmful effects of cosmetics when used excessively. Makeup is very beautiful. 
it makes you feel radiant after the application of the highlighters and illuminating product they leave your skin more shiny and sparkling but then just as we said excessive use of makeup can pose danger to your skin some of the chemicals that they claim to be carcinogens to however are only shown to cause cancer in the lab but when it's being used to make the makeup the makeup it goes under so many processes Mm -hmm. If you test the carcinogen alone, it is true, it can show that the carcinogen contains or can cause cancer. Yeah. But the process it goes through before you get the makeup reduces the danger in the carcinogen. Too much of everything is bad. Okay. When you put on makeup, maybe in the morning, at least within six to eight hours, you have to wash the makeup away. Cosmetic sellers appear informed about the negative complications of using wrong products and the adoption of bad beauty regimes. Despite the harm cosmetics products caused when wrongly applied, following manufacturer's advice, using right products for appropriate skin types and washing off makeup before heading to bed can make applying makeup a delightful experience. Makeup them at all be that, but ni ame ni I want to say, the Abba market, no, our motor be two cities, five cities, and many other, I don't know. So, who you saw, Emma Rashes, and I feel so tell you, super caps and super brea, Emma, when you must say, when you barber want them, ten be and when you look old. In the makeup, see, I did be a be a once a webby, a whoopie, who call baby dark rubia, not what they are following him. Now, so did bear cheer, would they be a said a be a be you should make up the day, who you saw. When you best say, when makeup, you will be able to say makeup say any more of what because Unam Crown foot to a airborne and in a makeup missive until you could jarry and in a bed paper about makeup and saying that ends news alert on capital television.